welcome to the show. I know many of you have been following our cooking school lessons. And Sarah Carey is here with another invaluable lesson, how to braise and stew. And today we're going to be making a delicious recipe for pork shoulder braised in hard cider. That sounds really good. Now, did you know that lurking amid the tranquil beauty of your garden are plants offering great benefits and terrible consequences? You may not be aware, but there are plants in your backyard that kill, maim, and otherwise offend. A collection of these wicked plants are on display until September 6th at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. And here to tell us about the exhibit and about these plants is Dr. Susan Pell. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you nice for coming. Nice to be here. Really nice. So, um, explain what you do. Are you just are you just like the fellow in charge of uh, wicked plants? No, I'm actually a staff scientist at Brooklyn Botanic Garden, and I run the molecular lab there. And part of my job is to do my research on the poison ivy and cashew family, oh, which see. includes lots of wicked plants. Oh yeah, and poison ivy. Oh, I hate poison ivy so much. I've had some wicked cases of Indeed, it. Indeed, yeah, it yeah. can cause really nasty blisters. Yeah, and now um, uh, Dr. Uh, Pell just went to New Guinea, Papua New Guinea, and uh, found all kinds of interesting things. Tell us about the trip. That's right, I led an expedition uh, to the most remote island chain off of oh. the southeast coast. So we were on a boat for three weeks and collected over 900 plants on oh, our wow. trip. Oh, it was wow. fabulous. For your library? Or for, for the research? herbarium at Brooklyn uh -huh. Botanic Garden. That's right. So oh. it's sort of a library of plants. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Indeed. And we were collecting these plants to assess the conservation needs on these islands. Fantastic. Well, there are some photos. Want to explain uh, and describe what, what are you doing there? So here I am collecting uh, one of the wicked plants that's a member of the family I study. This is Semicarpus, and you can see I'm wearing some latex gloves there to protect myself. Right. Next picture there, this is a member of the coffee family, and we first saw this fruit. We thought, oh, it's sort of nondescript, sort of potato looking, and then I sliced one of the fruit open, and you can see in the cross section, oh my there's a beautiful display of the seeds inside this fruit. Really that lovely. That is beautiful. Now, what is it? Is it tasty or? It's not tasty. See, this is not an edible fruit. Oh, okay. And then uh, this picture. So this picture is yeah, beautiful. That one I identified immediately. Does anybody know in the audience what that is? That's a nutmeg. And the little red uh, coating on the on the nut is That's mace. right. That's right. So the black that you see there is the seed, and that's nutmeg. And then the red is the arrel, and that is the mace that we use in cooking. I Absolutely. love that. Oh, and, and this is a beautiful plant here. And that this looks is, familiar. This is the, in the genus Sterculia, and it's in the hibiscus family. Oh, that's why. And this is the beautiful orange fr fruit with very nice sort of velvety black seeds inside. We saw these hanging in the forest uh, pretty much throughout the islands. Mm, that's gorgeous. Really beautiful. And then the final picture here <laughs> It's not so gorgeous. No, this is a stick insect. And uh, this is a group of organisms that we saw quite a few of, probably about 20 to 30 species they of bite? stick insects. They don't bite. We had oh. no problems with them. In fact, you could sort of pick them up and put them on your hand. I have one arm. about this big in a glass frame. Oh, yes. There are some yeah. enormous ones, probably yeah. from Australia, uh, possibly it, from New Guinea, from I the mainland. I think it's mainland. from there. I think yeah. it's from there. Well, now, uh, Susan, can I call you Susan? Yes. Okay. Susan has brought us some amazing, wicked plants. Now, some of these look benign. Some of these look familiar. But they actually all have characteristics that are slightly and maybe even more than slightly dangerous. That's right. So what do you want to start with? So let's start on the right here. Okay. So this is um, Selenum. The common name for this plant is purple devil. And as you can see, it's just covered in prickles. Some of it, them are it, up to an you inch long. You, know, you know what? You can't really see. Can you come in really close on these? Look it's, at there this. There we go. Very Look nasty. At the, I mean, you cannot touch this plant. This belongs to the tomato family? That's right. It's in the tomato family. And this, the next plant, actually. Oh, going down this way is not so bad, but don't go the other way. Yeah, don't go the other way. And the way. leaves. They're look at these. They're all over the leaves as look, well. Oh, they're on the back side as well. Oh, they my gosh, they're on the back side, too. So you meet that in the dark, and that's not very pleasant. It's not very pleasant. It will Any scratch bad? you. Um, will it infect you? You can get a rash from it, from just the, the I don't, spines breaking off I don't off want on that in my garden. No, definitely not. But now these are just regular old tomato that's plants. That's right, regular old tomatoes in the same family, actually in the same genus even, as the uh, purple devil. And we can only eat one part of this plant, and that's the fruit that we do eat. So the, the nice tomatoes are And if we eat the leaves? They will cause you severe gastrointestinal distress. Be Does everybody sick. know that? <laughs> very no, sick. it's true. It's very true. And if you, and no birds will eat these. You'll never see a bird eating a tomato leaf. So yeah. don't don't eat the leaves. Whatever you do, definitely not, or any other part aside right. from the fruit. 
The and next now, plant we have is rhubarb. This is another plant that we love to eat. So it makes a wonderful pie with strawberries. Oh, it does. Now, Delicious this is not pie. the edible kind, though. This um, this one is the edible kind. Oh, it is? Yeah, and so we can eat the... You can eat the uh, the Stalks. petiole here, the stalk okay. of the leaf, but the part that has the toxins in it is the blade of the leaf. And so when you buy it in the supermarket or a farmer's market, you'll never see it with that blade attached. They cut that off. This is very poisonous. What's this, what is it? What's the problems. name of the um, the poison? It's um, ox it's uh, oxalic acid. That's right. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's amazing. And uh, again, don't give those to the chickens. Do not feed those to the chickens <laughs> or to anyone else. Now, and the next plant that we have is the most toxic of the plants that I brought in oh, really? today. Indeed. Castor bean? This is castor bean. So we get castor oil from this, which we use. Uh, you know, it has been used for hundreds and hundreds of years by people, but that's because it's processed. So eating any unprocessed part of this plant mm -hmm. is a very bad idea. So I, I use the oil. Mm -hmm. Like if you have a little bump on your face, uh, like a little, um, right. like, like, I don't know, blemish. I put that on and it goes away immediately. And it's just fine. Yeah. Well, that oil has been processed. And so what's happened if, is basically it's been, the poison has been removed from it. That poison is called ricin, and it's particularly abundant in the seed coat of this plant. So don't eat the seeds. Do not don't eat the eat seeds. Don't eat the leaves. Don't, don't eat, eat the Don't eat any plant. part of the plant okay. unless you buy castor oil, and okay. that's fine. Now, hellebores. We just did a wonderful segment uh -huh. on hellebores. These are winter roses, and we had um, a, a, lo a lovely gardener from Pennsylvania here and uh, Mr. Culp, and uh, he didn't tell us that these were poisonous. They're quite toxic. Oh, indeed. why? So like what? These have um, a glycoside that's very similar to that found in foxglove. And so if you, if you consume this plant, it will slow your heart rate down. It will also give you stomach problems and um, can actually even cause coma. Hmm. And it will, if you touch the, um, the juice from it or the sap from it, you can get a rash. It will cause inflammation. Well, and I cut these all the time for my table, and I put them <laughs> on my dining room table. And in fact, I was told by our gardener to do so. And uh, not a Some mention. Some people might not be affected by the sap not of it, a but definitely do not consume it. Certainly okay. don't consume it. But they are beautiful in the garden, and you should not resist having them. Oh, now this thing is. Is this a, oh, it's a euphorbia. This is a euphorbia, that's Look, right. another and one of these prickly, horrible things that you cannot get near. And this is in the same family as the castor bean. Yeah, it looks like it. It has different poisons, though. And so this one is sort of, you know, wicked in many different ways. Um, it has spines all up and down the stem. You can see these are modified leaves. And it also has a milky latex in it. So I'm just going to chop off a piece of this plant to show you that. A lot of these succulent type Don't plants. Don't do this at home. I'm not going to. <laughs> But if it bro breaks off, oh, look at this, immediately milky. Just going to push that down so I'm not touching the You know, the rue latex. is like this, too. Oh, and you didn't did, bring any rue. I didn't bring any That's rue. That's very poisonous also. It is. Look at this. Look. And it Lots just keeps of bleeding and bleeding. There. And what will that do to you? That will give you a nasty rash. If you get it in your eyes, it can cause temporary blindness. That is another plant I do not want. <laughs> but I bet but it's a beautiful I bet plant. that I have that we all have plants growing in our garden that we don't know the toxic. It's nature true. Of. A great example of that are members of the Aram family. This has, this has toxic qualities. Indeed, it does. So this is um, a beautiful elephant ear, oh, I and there's love. some cutly philodendrons is that, that we have here. Is that a colocasia or an alocasia? This is a colocasia, okay. as is this one in the front, okay. and this is a philodendron. Yeah. And these all have. I have all of those in my garden. Yes, these all have <laughs> um, calcium oxalate crystals in them. These are very minute crystals that will sort of lodge into your into your mouth and cause swelling of your mouth, swelling of your throat. If you eat it. If you consume it, that's right. Yeah, if you okay. eat it. Yeah. I'm not going to go munching don't on these it. giant leaves, I don't <laughs> think. And I don't think anybody else is either. Thank you so much. This is so Thank much you. fun. And we'll be right back. Cooking School continues with a lesson in braising. And then Sarah Carey shows how to make a delicious pork shoulder. We'll be right back.